Destination Newry, it's the morning program. I'm Rowan Hand. This is the fundraising manager of Newry, the southern region, uh, the southern area hospice, uh, Magella Golligley. Uh, John McCardle from Newry and Mourne District Council, uh, lifetime work as a nurse, and Andy Moffat from the Unionist Party on that council. And I think really the, the origin of what we're going to talk about now, it's, a, it's kind of, I for a long time felt uh, and launched it on this program about a month ago that hospice should be funded 100% by government. That it's not acceptable that Magella and her colleagues are only getting one third of the necessary costs from central government. And last week the council came together and you've been discussing this over a period of time and you concurred and thought that you're going to put some political pressure on government, central government, to get hospice properly funded. Is that a, a fair summary of what you're going to do, guys? Yes, certainly is, uh, Rowan. Uh, we hope to come together as a council. I was hoping John would set us down and uh, bring a notice of motion to the 30 councils in the area morning and get that out to other councils. All the councils in well, Northern we, Ireland? We, uh, get it out to all the councils well and, and get as much backing as we can for the hospice. Yeah. Because as John says, there's a lot of meets today in, in the hospice. Yeah. They do a lot of great work up there. We all appreciate the work they do. Um, when, when a lot of people think they're going to the hospice at the end of it, but certainly not. You go up there and a lot of the times you're nursed to better health. Yeah, and absolutely. And you get great care. And also, Andy, <coughs> if it is, and John, you'd know this, uh, if it is the end of you, the hospice, with the magnificence of its palliative care, makes it the very finest end there can be. There's no doubt about it. <clears throat> the hospice nurses, unlike nurses in a general medical ward there, they have that extra time. And people near the end of their lives, they need, they need that bit of time, they need to think, and certainly if they've got responsibilities, families, property, or whatever it is, they need time to get things straightened out, in other words, but they also need time to, uh, with their loved ones. That extra time is very important. Now, regarding the hospice, I've always thought it should be fully funded. I worked in a medical ward for 17 years. Uh, Daisy Hill or any other hospital would have to open another one or two wards uh, to, to take all the cases. So the hospice is um, relieving general hospitals of tremendous uh, amount of work. And as I said, uh, we could, the hospitals couldn't cope at the moment. Couldn't cope. Yeah. So it's, and the fact that they, they now, and then the hospice, not only cancer, terminal cases, but multiple cirrhosis, yep. upper motor neuron disease, AIDS, and many other conditions, mm. and also the, out, uh, the outreach work that they're doing, it is unbelievable. Magella, how, uh, this is music to your ears, presumably. Yeah, we are absolutely delighted with the support that Newry Mourn Council are providing to the hospice through their health committee. Um, we have other councils who have also contacted us yep. as well. And yes, <coughs> this is new. This is the first time that a council has focused, finally focused, on a political initiative yeah, to get you full funding. There was some years back before my time, Rowan, Newry Mourn Council did bring up a sort of a working group together as well. Right, yeah. um, and that was to do with a, a capital project at the time. But certainly of recent times, yes, this is, this is new. We do welcome the support. On, on a quiet scale, we have also been lobbying as well, Rowan, directly to mm. the Department of Health, um, and that would have been from the middle of last year. And we have had a number of political parties who have come to visit the hospice. Yes. Um, so we have been working in a quiet way, um, but we are very appreciative of the yeah. support that we are getting. I, it, it drives a, a cruel and cold and sharp stake through my heart. Every time I look at newspaper articles with three of you standing up there in front of St. John's house and the headline says crisis, mm. you guys are too good and too important mm. and too central mm. to society to be under any crisis mm. pressure at any mm. time. It, we found last year very difficult, Rome, with the economic climate and we did go out to press in about September time of last year saying that we were experiencing difficulty. The fundraising supporters are still in the community, however, the amount of money they're able to give is less, and that's just a sign of the times. So what we tried to do at the middle of last year was, was to alert the public to that, but also to bring out a number of other campaigns. So we've been trying to say, here's another new sort of range of fundraising activity would you like to support us with? And I have to say, I mean, we are, we are you know, greatly appreciative of the support we do get. It of is 70%. Um, we also have a number of volunteers who do a great amount of work of for us as well. 
but um, the, 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 the landscape is changing regarding health service in Northern Ireland and John has, has alluded to that there in what he said earlier, transforming your care um, which is the new um, way to go in terms of, of services. Well, what does this mean for you in hospice? Well for us in hospice basically what it means is, is there will be a local commissioning of services, so there's, a, there's a local commissioning, southern local commissioning group and they have the government have also have these things called integrated care partnerships who are there to um, manage and to support what commissioning will be done from our point of and view. And what would you be commissioning? They'll be commissioning. It's like commissioning local health care services. What will be done in Daisy Hill? What will be done in the community? So you're sitting places? in hospice and that you will put an application, not an application, similar, but you'll yes. put a submission in yes. requiring a, a commissioning of service A, B, C and D. Yeah, the, 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 the regional health board will commission services locally and that will go to the central government in, 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 in instalment in the regional side. But um, from our point of view, uh, basically our services, the, the Transforming Your Care document is looking at moving health into the community and it's about keeping people from hospitals because yeah. hospitals as John says is where the major cost is. Yeah. From our point of view our inpatient unit Rowan takes in one third of its admissions will come from acute hospital uh -huh. so we're relieving the hospital sites and 60 the, the other the other two thirds will come from the community. Now those people in the community may be people who may end up going to accident or emergency who may end up going into the to the hospital setting mm -hmm. But our, our intervention. Yeah. Um, so we are assisting in transforming your career. We are, are keeping that. So are. from our point of view, it's about recognising the volume of what we do. The revenue that we get from the government is to do with, or the, the funding that we get from the government is to do, our, uh, our, it's to do revenue costs. I suppose our main issue at the minute as well is, is we, don't ha we don't get capital support. So, for example, if we're looking to do a capital build or extend or renovate, etc. So your house can fall down as far as government's concerned? Yes, we have no capital uh, pro uh, budget that we can apply to. Any capital that we have received recently, we've been able to secure through grant applications, yeah. funding. And that's a separate to our 2.3 million fundraising target. Yeah. So um, we are really appreciative of the support yeah. that we are getting. You know, well, my, this is, you see, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's funding an essential service in a kind of willy-nilly, begging bowl approach, you fellows should be able to stand head and shoulders above all those considerations. The fact that you cannot build a necessary new wing, you can't, and that they're only giving you a third of your operational costs overall, mm -hmm. that is nothing short of a disgrace, yeah. guys. Yeah. And the other factor is, uh, figures out from the British government there last week, or in the early part of the week, cancer cases are going to double yeah. in the, mm. between now and 2030. They're going to double. So the work of the hospice, is, the hospice isn't going to uh, decrease, it's no. going to incre massively increase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and that means massive pressure mm -hmm. on these people. Mm -hmm. And in the day and age we're living in, massive recession. And then there's another factor. Many other charities would say, oh, we're not getting much because it's all going to the hospice. Mm -hmm. But that's where no. it's needed. Mm -hmm. There's no, a I, massive I, need. I, I find it offensive that hospice is, re is regarded as a charity. Mm. You're not a charity. Mm. You're part of a health service mm. from the cradle to the grave. Mm. And Andy, you're, you, you, this, I, I beg that this new initiative by council will be a sustained initiative that you're not going to be put off with bad answers. No, we certainly won't be. We're going to be bringing all of the political parties together to do this. Don't want to be seen that mm. John McCardle or Andy Moffat mm. is, is uh, pushing this along. It's, uh, we need a, a, the whole council behind us and we won't be taking no for an answer yeah. mm. from Mr. Pooch yeah. and, and the health. When, and when, do you, when do you go to full council with your well, recommendation? Well, John, I will have sat down, I will speak to John here, and we will be getting a notice of motion put together mm. with signatures, I would hope, from all the councillors, yeah. all political parties, and we'll go forward in that very, and very soon, I would think. And Andy, what's the mechanism for involving all the other councils? Well, there'll be pressure put on Mr. Pooch that a, um, it's a very, it's mm. needy, a needy, as you said, it shouldn't be looked upon as a charity. It's a service to all the community. Yeah. And I noticed there will be reading the, the death lists in many of the papers. They're away across the whole of, mm. away Portadown, yeah. Guildford, Banbridge, right across mm. the whole globe, uh, right, you know. 
It's the whole Southern Trust area, you know, it goes through yep. to Armagh, Dungannon, Portadown, Ar uh, New uh, Red Cross to Kilkeel, South Down. So it's, we're covering like three council areas nice. in terms of yep. Newry, nice. Moore, and Cambridge. You, you, also take, you also take patients in from the Republic of Ireland. We have in the past. We ha that's what has lapsed, Rowan. We would have had taken people from North Louth, um, and that would have been through a, uh, where they would have funded a patient to come, patients to yeah. come to us. That hasn't happened in the last sort of year to two years. However, in our strategy, which, which John has referred to, we are looking at how we develop our services going forward for the next five years, and we're looking at our, a prime location of where we are. I mean, we're cross border, we're on, we're on the border. Absolutely. Um, the patients in the North Louth area, I mean, they're the nearest hospice to them. They have to travel for a building. They have to have to Dublin. Yeah. So we are looking at that, and that is in our strategy. And of course, that forward. that that obviously creates a potential source of further funding Absolutely, for you. Absolutely, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Yes, and I could add to that, I mean, at the moment, in renal dialysis case in Daisy Hill, we have six beds allocated to the Republic. So people in, say, Louth and Monaghan and maybe Cavan there, they can come to Newry, get their dialysis done and go home the same day. Whereas prior to this, they went to Dublin, they had to stay overnight in that. So there is an extension. And yes, the, the hinterland, our natural hinterland, is Louth there. Yeah. And the more people we can attract, but I mean, well, that, the, dia that dialysis work. Are you getting paid for that? Oh, are we yes. getting money for that? Oh yes. So there is a there oh, is yes. a template and we're for you to get doing Ian. the same with hospice. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and recently, you may know about this. You alluded to the increase in cancers. But I mean, uh, two years ago, I was reading statistics from hospice, the mm -hmm. Southern Area Hospice. Mm -hmm. The level of cancer and life-threatening disease is increasing dramatically in is, our area. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the, the figures, the, the general figures in Northern Ireland are that one in three people in Northern Ireland will, be ha will receive a cancer diagnosis mm. in their lifetime. Well, there's um, no doubt. No so doubt. It, it is quite high. Yeah. The, 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 need, the need for extra funding, uh, I mean, what is the hospice? It really is an arm. It's a very important arm of a hospital. It's a hospital extension. And the work that they're doing and the, the relief that they're doing for hospitals in general, it's unbelievable. Mm. I mean, it is an absolute disgrace that we have it in a corner there. Don't let it out. Give them a few pounds. That'll keep them quiet, but it doesn't work like that. Yeah. And I mean, it hasn't uh, hospital, working like they're up to now. Well, I mean, but these are the people—people people working on the ground, working night and day to provide this fabulous, and it is a fabulous service. And yeah. uh, Andy talked about it that you're not going to take no for an answer. Oh, I can give you Poots's answer now. Right. Poots and simply yeah. says, I sympathise. I understand. Yeah. Uh, we would love to do more, but we can't do more." And he'd close the door on you. But what are you going to do then? Yeah, well, I find with some of these people in power, if it was their own father or mother or brother or sister, you would have a totally different view on these things. You know, no, the pressure has to go on. They, they need. I mean, at the moment in Belfast, there is a. I, I would nearly call it a slush fund. There's 80 million pounds at the moment has been allocated, hasn't been allocated, so sitting in a pile because the two major parties cannot decide where the money should go. Yeah. That's for three years mm -hmm. sitting there, not a penny touched. Isn't that so it? some of that money. That Andy, we're, we're big enough to realise that we may not get 100%. Yeah, yeah. but you have but, to ask for it. But we'll be looking for 100%. But we can get it up to 60, 70 or 80%. Yeah. We're going we're in the right we're, direction. Yes, we're heading in the right direction. Right. Like we would we'd have to live in the big world. Yeah. So if we can get a rise in the percentage at all, yeah. we'll, we'll be happy enough. But mm. we'd like 100%. Yeah, mm. yeah. But if we can get it up to 60 or 70, 80%, yeah. it's running, taking 2.2 million a year to run the hospice. And that's fairly bad, I would think. I mean, well, it's, it's, and, it's, and it's in, gone into debt this year, I think, yeah. uh, 200,000 or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gone into next year's rates, mm -hmm. estimate. See, the thing is, we're not talking you know, dangerous money not here. At all, no. no. As far as government's concerned. It's a service to the community that that's yeah. there. And, and what Magella, they get is unbelievable up there. Yeah, Magella, what, what you talk about your quiet overtures to mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. What are you being told as to why they won't give you more funding? Well, what, what, basically what we're doing is we're submitting, you know, if, like for example last year where we were running into difficulty, we had indicated that there were, we were running into difficulty. The initial comments were, you know, there is no more money out there, which is what you've said. However, we are hopeful, we are very hopeful that the Minister will come and visit the hospice very soon um, because we have submitted you know, other uh, representation to him um, through different parties as well. So we're hopeful of that. Um, we are also submitting a general request into the Regional Palliative Care Board of Northern Ireland. Um, so at the moment, Rowan, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. A work in progress. Um, and has, 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 has your Health Minister, Poots, has he been here at hospice yet? Um, <coughs> not on an official visit, no. no. But we are very hopeful that there will be one very soon, yeah. shortly, Rowan. I think um, it's, a, you know, 
Minister, for God's sake, get yeah. yourself down here and see yeah. what's going on. But the other factor, I mean, he's just one person, one minister. We need the support of the executive for every minister and every MLA. Okay. And if the pressure goes on, let's face it, once you put massive pressure on, and if it's continuous, you get a result. Yeah. And the result we want is, we want a major increase in funding. The other factor is, the people out there, who the, the people who are the volunteers, and the professional people trying to raise money. I mean, when you try to raise money, in a, at a time of a recession, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's no. it can be very embarrassing, and it, it's, it's, it's soul destroying. It's soul destroying. But you shouldn't. It shouldn't we shouldn't even be going there. Yeah. We know, should be getting the money from government. Yeah, and you know, it's better to try and and, and fail than not to try at all. Oh, you must try. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know. because the the spotlight of publicity on this is emphasising the, the truth, the fundamental truth that I am as entitled to my place in hospice as I am entitled to getting my bad knee x-rayed up at Daisy Hill, which yeah. happened yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, are you optimistic? You'd have to be, Rowan. You wouldn't do our job if you didn't. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? But, you I mean, know, you've been yeah. trundling on well, yeah. under this yoke of two-thirds of the funding yeah. on your shoulders. Well, it's the nature of what we do. It's, 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 it's what we have to do. You have to be optimistic, as I said, to work on fundraising. We would have to run it. Fundraising department would have to run, you know, as, a, as if we were like, a sales team is too strong a word, but yeah. we have to sell the concept of, of, the, of the service and the care. We have a calendar of plan of activities right across the year. We're planning next year as well. Of course. I mean, it's, it's over 6,000 a day we have to raise. Yeah. Um, which How is much shorter that are you at the moment? Well, we've just started into a new target. Uh -huh. a new, so for the target of 2014 is 2.3 million. We were um, almost 200,000 short of our target last 200 year. Short. We raised just over it was 2.17 million last year. And where did that 200,000 short come from? In terms of making up the deficit, and making up the deficit from a governance point of view, as a charity, Rowan, we have to have 68 months operating reserves. So what we have is, and from a good governance point of view, and from a good management point of view, we would have operating reserves. Yeah. Because you you wouldn't. And are you allowed to draw on that? We have to. Yeah. You know, yeah. You've, you've no other way around that. So what what have you got in the in the uh, those reserves at the moment? We we would have about 68 months operating reserves. Yeah. I mean, our overall running costs are 3.4 million per year. Yeah. Um, our fundraising target is 2.3. And how much of the, how, how many how many months of your reserves did that 200,000 shortfall take up? You would be going into, um, well, I mean, our, our monthly target is, is 191,000. Yeah. So you're going into nearly a month of it, you know. A month of it. So they would be what yeah. we would call free reserves, Rowan. Yeah. You know, we would have to have some investment. As an organisation that's been running since 1989, yeah. we would not have been able to operate other than having good governance and having yes, good practices. Yes, of course, of course. Because you don't, you, you don't want a situation where in the morning the hospice is closing, oh. which it won't be, Rowan, no. um, because we have good governance and good management practice in place. But on an ongoing basis, from a sustainability point of view, we could not sustain that. No, no, so, no, you can't. Because so you're, you're dwindling all the time. You are, yeah. So from yeah. that point of view, therefore, we need to be looking at different income streams whether that be through funding from government, whether that be through funding from cross-border initiatives or whatever that may be. It's a nice combination, that. Yes, and, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's the way to go. If we're, mm. we're strategic, we're looking outward, and yeah. you have to do that to survive in this, in this yeah. world. Yeah. And There's another factor. <clears throat> this is a marvellous uh, opportunity. It is totally cross-community. There would be no councillor who would disagree with this notice of motion which we'll submit to council. So you have total support. And there again, it's like the rolling stone. If we, we can get our act together, and if this act then crosses over all of the other councils, and if every 20 of the 26 councils, if every council puts pressure on, there's bound to be a result. There's bound to be, say, right. In other words, they're going to have to take a hard look at this because public opinion alone will condemn government, oh, will condemn mm. the health people <clears throat> if they're not prepared to stand up and be counted, if they're not prepared well, to fund something which is it's invaluable. Well, putting it, it simple, you know, they've been getting away with it up to now. Oh, no doubt about it. I suppose we've been doing a good enough job, to be honest, and the yeah. economic session wasn't as bad as it has mm, been, and yeah. that's really impacting on us and other charities as well, mm. to be fair. But can I just say on the back of what John is saying, Banbridge Council have been very supportive of well and they've come out with a similar motion oh, yeah. in terms Excellent. of supporting hospice yeah. and we have met with uh, the Chief Executive Banbridge Council Liam Hannaway and with Thomas McCall the Chief Executive New England Council and they've been very supportive recently and one other just plug if I may we are also um, Dominic Bradley MLA is hosting in the Long Gallery in Stormont an event for us we're launching our 500 club which is a fundraising oh. initiative but by doing that we're bringing it to the MLAs in Stormont yeah, with our good. services you know so, as well. Uh, what is the 500 club? It basically it's where we're asking businesses to donate £100 to their 
organised to the hospice as a yeah. fundraising initiative, and we're looking to get 500 members. Yeah. And, and we're calling it the 500 Club. There's a wee bit of return in that in terms of publicity for the businesses, yeah. etc. So the business will, 500 businesses will give you 50,000. Uh, uh, 50, yes. That's, that's so straightforward. Yes, it's simple. We're trying yeah. to do simple things, yeah. you know. But yeah. uh, it's, it sounds simple, Ron, but when yeah. you go out to ask for money, you can leave it easy. No. But uh, no. anyway, we're launching that on the 17th in the Long Gallery in Stormont, and the MLAs for the area have been asked to. See, that's the that. time. You, you guys are going nowhere unless you get the MLAs involved. But, but, but the ground and, support. And the membership part. And the membership yeah. part. Yeah. Yeah. The ground support is very welcome, Ron. Yeah. The ground support on the ground yeah. through the yeah. councillors is very, yeah. very supportive. Oh, very, very no, welcome. that's the point. But I'm yeah. saying, in, in order for them to bring home the bacon to you, yes. the, yeah. they're not, the council's not going to fund you. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the central government's going to fund you, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's the treasure chest we want to get the key for. Yes, uh, and you get that through your MLAs and your MPs. Yes, you know, uh, yeah. that's the way it starts at the bottom. It does. Yeah. Oh, it starts at the bottom. That's why I'm so thrilled yeah. what yeah. you guys are oh, doing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there'll be a notice of motion go in. Then the most important meeting is the first Monday of the month. So w Andy, myself, and our colleagues, we will have a notice of motion in uh, seeking support, and we'll have it well, well planned out. Uh, I, I can see it'll never fail to get the attention oh, yeah. and the, the support of everyone. everyone. I'm supposed to uh, ask you, and it's a good opportunity to ask you. Oh, you, have no a lot, you have a lot of you have a lot of uh, good things yeah. that you no 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 go that on. you need to do. Yeah. The no, 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 no. Are you going to retire <laughs> from council? Absolutely, yes. Are you going to retire? Yes, I will be retiring in 2015, yes. Right, absolutely. Well, boys, you better get this moving soon. You, well, can, you well, can't well, leave this well, business well, not yeah, done. Yeah. But that doesn't say that I, I lose interest in health, because no. I've got a fantastic interest. I haven't spent my life and I haven't got a good living from health. Yeah. Yes, I, I love well, you need to, if I may say so, you need to pass on the baton of deep yeah. caring oh, about wow. this to colleagues who are going to be there. Well, I would hope to I hope to believe in a good fellow in my place and he right. certainly has the hospice at heart. Uh, the same. Yeah. Andy yeah. has a young, there's a young counsellor there, he's excellent, yeah. David yeah. Taylor. Oh yes, I met David. Yeah, David Rush yeah. Level, yeah. He's he's, you said, you got him from America, he's, he's a clone of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're kicking on. Are you a Catholic Huguenot or a oh, Protestant no. Huguenot? They, they, were, <laughs> they were Protestant textile people. <laughs> were they? The Huguenots, yeah. Well, so they're very welcome. <laughs> oh yeah, I the, mean, Muffet is very welcome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're <laughs> very Protestant people, the Huguenots. That's a whole new show. Guys, I really am grateful thrilled right, by this but right. uh, please please you, you know you, you we used to call it uh, we got the channels when we're coming back from far away overseas yeah. when the boat came back into the channels again back from hong kong everybody started to pack the case and get ready to jump and to get home yes, right. so you guys can't jump ship without getting this thing moving but we will get it moving yeah, yeah. yeah we will no doubt i mean andy and his colleagues but all of the 30 of us up there we will i mean this will be a stampede Mm -hmm. This will be a stampede in relation to pressure from the ground, and when the pressure starts mounting, then then the senior politicians have to take note. Okay, right, right. Yeah. And they certainly do need to get extra funding because there's a crisis in our community with mortgages and rates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You name it, the young people now they're getting very tight. A lot yeah, of the people right. in in our area. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Andy Moffat, uh, John McArdle, Magella Golligly. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, Dawn. An absolute pleasure. Thank you very you, much. You've, Thank heard you, it, you've heard it here this morning. You've heard the commitment. You've heard the need. And let's hope that it will all go well. I sent my tax check off to the Queen the other day, accompanied by a letter. I said, I don't want you to use this for weaponry. Would you send it, please, to Magella Golig? Oh, my goodness. But I've got no response right. yet. I'll let you know if I get one, too. <laughs> so this go well, you people out right, there. Right. We're going to wish you farewell. Now, Sean has some nice music lined up for you. But I wish you well. And don't forget my constant advice to you. It comes from my people across the Great River Niger. When you've struggled as much as you can struggle between the immensities in your life, when you've done your best and can do no more, simply lay your head on your hand and leave the rest to the God of your believing. Go well, take care. All things being good, I'll see you tomorrow morning again. Thank you.